Whenever you're ready. Did you know that there are almost 150 million cats in the U.S.? That's almost half of the U.S. human population. I mean, it makes sense, right? Cats are one of the most popular pets. But what if I told you that of those 150 million cats, half of them were feral and unowned? With all those cats outside, you've got to wonder, what can the impact of them all be? You see, people, there aren't just cats living outside, but people let their cats outside as well, which um, contributes to the number of cats that are roaming around in neighborhoods. For one thing, Cats are predators. Sure, you may think that your pet is a cute ball of fur, but they're animals nonetheless. And with animals with instincts, they naturally hunt prey. Our domestic kitties are obviously not a natural part of the food chain, so the repercussions that they have on the natural ecosystem can be detrimental. People often say that we don't inherit the earth from our parents, but we rather borrow it from our children. And when people use this phrase, they often talk about living sustainably or going green. But the problem with cats can be something that's much simpler to solve and almost as large an impact. You see, you might not think that the few little presents that your cat brings you every other day is a big problem. But if you add that up for every single cat in the US, well, that's a pretty big number. You see, it's estimated that 1.4 to 3.7 billion birds are killed by cats in the US every year. Only one third of these, however, are natives or non-native species. That means that cats are not only making an impact on bird populations as a whole, but they're also allowing non-native species to invade and take over. In addition, 6.9 to 20.7 billion small mammals like rabbits, shrews, mice, or squirrels are killed by cats each year. However, 70% of these deaths are caused by feral cats. In addition, outdoor cats can just be downright nuisances. You, your cat might be the most precious thing to you, but what about to your neighbor? Yeah, I think not. You see, outdoor cats can pull down the, na pull down the quality of your neighborhood. <laughs> um, Imagine a big neighborhood with amazing pretty houses and lush green yards. It sounds pretty great, right? But if you add to that neighborhood the stench of pee that cats use to mark their territory or the constant noise from fighting or mating behaviors, and then not to mention the spread of fleas and more flea infestations, well, that's just not so great, is it? These are just some of the complaints that residents have about neighborhood cats. You see, your cat isn't going to be completely bored or feel cooped up if you let it outside, but it can have an impact on your neighbors. People often complain about how dog owners don't pick up their dog's poop when they take them out for walks, but how is it any different from letting your cat outside alone and letting it do whatever it wants? So if you really want your cat outside, allow it to go outside on a leash and take it for a walk and it'll attract attention and you can be like popular or something. But be mindful of others and just don't let your cat out alone. Even so, your feelings and opinions matter too, just as much as your neighbors. And that's even more reason to keep your cat inside. You see, cats are not only a danger to the environment, but they are also in danger of the environment. Whether it be a mishap with another wild animal or a run-in with a speeding car, um, your cat outside puts it in a lot, lot of danger. Even if you think of, that it's doing fine, these immediate dangers aren't everything. Letting your cat outside can expose it to many different diseases. And you may think your cat's doing fine and you take it to the vet all the time, but some uh, diseases such as toxoplasmosis, which is a uh, bacterial infection, and rabies are very hard to detect, 
in a lab. So <coughs> while you may take your cat to the vet, there's still great danger that it could be sick. In addition, diseases like distemper can be undetectable in a lab. So you won't be able to diagnose your cat until it starts showing symptoms. Another um, disease that's possible is feline infectious peritonitis. And this disease is not only undetectable, but it also is uncurable and fatal. Um, so before you let your cat outside, make sure you're aware of exactly all the danger that you're putting it in. So at this point, it should be obvious that the best way to keep your cat safe, your neighbors happy, and help the environment is to just keep your cat inside. But what about the 50% of cats that are unowned? You see, a female feral cat can have about five kittens per year. And if you multiply that by the approximate 37.5 million female feral cats, that's almost 187.5 million cats being born each year. And this increase in feral cats in your neighborhood can lead to more cats being put into shelters. And as, shelter, and as room in these shelters um, runs out, it not only leads to like higher costs when you're trying to trap and like bring these cats in, but it can also lead to higher euthanasia rates. Um, and, as some, and at some point, cats that can be perfectly adoptable that would make a perfect member of your family can be put down. So what, so what can you do to help? Well, for one thing, if you're looking to adopt, just go to a shelter. But adopting isn't the only way that you can help. You see, one way to help manage feral cat populations is, to, is this program that traps, sterilizes, and releases feral cats. Um, you can even help here in Gainesville with, the, op with Operation Catnip. Um, even if you can't give them your time, you can um, still like, help through donations. And no matter how small, these sh this shows that um, trap and release management programs are a simple and easy way to make a difference not only the on the environment <coughs> but in your community.